All right. We are finally here. You know, I think as a coach, you're um, always enjoy all the time you have for prep to get ready for games and uh, to get your team ready to go out there and play. But I think our guys are certainly excited and ready to go go hit somebody else and go play somebody else. Got a, a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Heck and the job that he's done there at Idaho. Um, he's really, you know, made made them a, a really solid team and obviously a playoff team uh, this past year and, and done a good job of uh, winning and, and they have some good stuff schematically that creates challenges for you. Um, also really excited to see our fans on Saturday. You know, they did an unbelievable job selling out the, the crowd. I think we'll have an awesome uh, support, really not just this game, but all the games here at Autzen this year and we always you know relish the opportunity to go out there and play in front of our fans so that being said we can open it up lead off over on the right with chris yeah dan can you get into some just specifics about what iowa does that i don't want to say makes you wary but you know what do you see from them well idaho, idaho. yeah what did i say iowa i was like, i don't think we're playing them this week western guy here <laughs> yeah no uh, no i mean they've, they've got some good skill players you know they have some guys on their team that are uh, from oregon that i think it'll mean a lot to them to get the opportunity to play um you know, here at Otson, but ultimately a lot of movements and shifts. You know, I think those are always a, a challenge when you're playing teams like that. They have a great uh, wide out and wire that does a good job. Um, they've done a good job of uh, acquiring players. Certainly they've lost a couple of players in the portal, but they've done a good job of acquiring players that I think can create, um, you know, matchups uh, at times. And they just play. They play really hard. You know, they're well coached. Um, they have an identity. You know, I think they're a team that can run the ball well and obviously were really explosive last year. Um, you know, on offense and do a good job of running the ball on defense. So they play good team football, play, are, are sound in special teams. They do a lot of stuff well. On the left, Eric. It was just one start last year, but I think Lane performed really well in that against Idaho State based on the numbers I saw. What, what can you tell us about what you've seen from him and what kind of a challenge he presents? Yeah, he's uh, he's a really good passer. You know, obviously did a great job in the Idaho State game last year, did well in the spring game. Uh, you can tell he, he understands where to go with the ball and trust his guys to go get it, you know, but he throws, you know, throws it well. And I think, you know, people probably underestimate his athleticism as well. He's a guy that can run and um, was a good player here in the state of Oregon. So obviously that's showing up there for them. Back right here. One of Idaho's strengths, it appears, kind of after fall camp, was their experience up front. Just what do you, how do you, do you intend to prepare for that uh, this week? Yeah, we have to go play, you know, sound football and good football. But yeah, they, they have an experienced O line. I think that's something they're going to lean on for sure. Um, I think they can handle, you know, bigger environments because of that. They've played in some some hostile environments like Montana before. This will be a little bit different, I think, here at Autzen. But uh, that's a that's a sound unit. It's a strength of their team. So I, I don't think it takes anything special or different for our guys beyond knowing that they got to play play well and do their job. Front left, James. Who will be the starting center? Yeah, that's, we'll, we'll see on Saturday. You know, there's a lot of guys that I think can play winning football. So you guys want to know every single starter. For me, it's about how many guys can play, you know, winning football for us. And you could see more than one guy in, in those situations. Let's go back there. Turn the left. Yeah. Has there been any separation between Austin and Dante in terms of the backups? And just maybe speak broadly what you saw from both of them. Yeah, I think both those guys had really good fall camps. Um, the good job, done a good job in the spring uh, as well. And again, I think we have multiple quarterbacks that can play winning football for us. So um, they both understand our system. You know, both of those guys have gone over and helped us get looks um, from the look team as well, um, which that's the key is playing football, right? Going out there and have an opportunity to play, you know, winning football. But both those guys, I think, can do that for us. All the way in the back, on the, all the way in the back, Matt. Dan, in your first few years here, your teams really haven't overlooked any opponent. How do you get this year's team to, to do that? And Because we've seen FCS teams give Power 5 teams really hard games. Yeah, I think trusting the process, right? We know that we want to set the bar for us. You know, what's our bar? Uh, what's our standard? What do we want it to look like? And, you know, being – you know, self-aware enough that you can go attack the things that you have to improve. And regardless of who you're playing, when you're playing, we always talk about our biggest opponent is Oregon, right? We have to go play or be do the best to be the best version of Oregon that we can be. Coach, you've obviously had quite a few week ones in your career. What do you enjoy most as a head coach with the week one preparation, just getting things, you know, ready for the season to begin? Yeah, just seeing what, what kind of team you have, right? And I think a lot of fall camp leads up to that. And like I said, as a coach, I always enjoy having the extra time to prepare and get ready. But as you know, for our players, I'm, I'm sure they're excited to get to play somebody else. Back right, Aaron again. Um, the transfer portal, like you, I think, mentioned, hit Idaho pretty hard. When you're preparing um, for a week one 
opponent that did have a lot of uh, transfer portals out and transfer portals in. Just uh, how do you attack the film of that and how much do you look into the spring game but also have to go back and look at multiple players that played on multiple teams last season? Yeah, we do a deep dive. I mean, we watch a lot of different film. They have a, a really dynamic returner that played at Weaver State last year um, that's been, you know, really good. Uh, I think he has five, you know, kickoff returns for touchdowns. Um, so he's had, had a lot of success, but that's that's what you do. You go look at other opponents and where are other places that those guys have been and what their film looks like and how it adds up and matches up with your team. Front left, James. To follow up on the interior line, Dan, how much of this, for context purposes, is coming down to snaps between Charlie and Poncho versus a Charlie at center versus a Nishad at guard conversation and, and dynamic? I think all things are on the table. I mean, uh, Again, how many guys can we have that will be can play winning football? We'll we'll send out the group that we think has done the best in fall camp to start you know start the game. But I think for us to be think long term, we have to be able to pre prepare and have uh, multiple guys play at multiple positions. Yeah, I'll let Eric. Are you expecting Jaleel and Dave and and Gary to be available on Saturday? Um, I don't think uh, Jaleel or Dave will be available. You know, Gary I think could be available. All the way in the back, left back talked about wanting to find out how many guys can play. What's the kind of a, a good number that you, you look at for a game by game basis and what dictates that? Yeah, I don't, we, we don't set a number. What, you know, what's winning football, right? So hopefully, you know, every single guy on our team, but that's not necessarily the case. So we'll play the guys that have earned the opportunity to play. There's some guys that have probably earned the opportunity to play that have a lot of talent in front of them. Um, and if there's a discrepancy, you play the more talented guy or the guy that's ready right now. There's also some guys that are really talented and, and could help us, uh, but maybe they're not, just not there yet. So it's game one. We'll go, we'll go out there and, and play the guys I think that can contribute to us winning on the football field. Back to James. You touch on their kickoff returner. Kickoff coverage was much improved last year relative to the year before. Just how important is that with him back there? And will Boyle be the primary kickoff guy uh, for you guys? Yeah, the, I think we had a couple guys that can kick for us, whether it's Boyle or Atticus, um, you know, even Gage and Grant have all, all, all been able to kick. So I think you could see multiple guys there. Uh, kickoff coverage is really important. It's sound. I mean, it's an opportunity to create an explosive play. But for us, that's our first play on defense. So um, you have to respect who's back there and make sure you do a good job in your lanes. Um, but that's been, you know, the guy that they have back there has been really aggressive in bringing the ball out. And uh, we have to be aware of that. Right here from right. Where have you seen improvement in some of the newcomers from the start of fall camp into game week? Yeah, just execution. You know, I think that's always a, a bigger leap for guys coming from high school um, to college is the amount of stuff that we ask these guys to absorb, you know, and do. And uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how good a football player you are if you're not going the right direction or running the right route or doing the right assignment. So being assignment sound and playing relentlessly, that's what we look for. Back left, Matt. We saw you talk about position battles in the Team Out West video. I'm curious, just what were the ones that were really competitive for, for you guys as a staff this camp? I mean, the, the, honestly, I mean, all, every position, right? Like, we have battles across the board. There's some guys that have established themselves as guys that have played winning football and are, are clear starters for us. But for us, it's about clocking in every single day. So I think we've seen it in multiple groups on multiple sides of the ball. Front left, James. With the Big Ten having a universal policy regarding injury reports, Dan, just how do you envision uh, going about that in terms of disseminating information during the course of the week on these nights, on the midweek of just how you would prefer it so we're not running into any uh, issues along the way before those Saturday reports come out? You mean from you guys? Yes. Yeah, just read it on Saturday. That's when you guys will get it. So if you see it on Saturday, you guys can use it from there. Back over here on the right, Chris. Yeah, I know it's been a week, but we haven't talked to you since. What were your, just your thoughts on Bo being named the starter at Denver? Yeah, excited for Bo. You know, um, you don't know when that's going to happen or come, and I know that's what you know. Bo realizes he just went to work. He's gone to work every single day, and, and now that he's been named that, that wasn't his goal. It wasn't to be, just become the starter. It's to play winning football. So um, I know Go, Bo will be humble and continue to pre prepare the way he always has, but I think obviously you know, Denver's a great fit for him, and they've done a good job of developing him as he's been there. Back left, Brett. Coach Olfall Camp, you've talked about the growth and the importance of growth this, you know, the last couple of weeks. Do you feel like heading into week one, you're seeing where your team wants to be at and how much more can they continue to grow before obviously Saturday, Saturday comes around? Yeah, every day. You know, uh, I've, I've been happy with the growth that our team's had. I think they've practiced hard and worked really hard this offseason, um, but certainly don't want that to stop. That's all we got for you, Coach. All right, thank you. Appreciate it.